I'm Jason Ruddick. I'm a field agronomist here in Northeast Arkansas. I'm here today. I want to visit with you on some things that that I have been getting asked some questions about the last couple of weeks. Uh, we are here in the first week or so of March, and um, we've had a lot of a drier weather than normal, and also some warmer temperatures uh, than we normally have for this time of year. And uh, been getting some questions about planting soybeans this early. And I uh, just kind of want to share some some insight and some things that I have seen over the last few years in our planting date trials here in eastern Arkansas in relation to maturity groups, uh, variety selection, and how those things can affect uh, the varieties and, and your success um, in the, these planting dates on the, that are in this kind of mid-March to, to late March, early April planting window. So I've got some visuals I'll share. So if you look at uh, th this picture I've got pulled up here, um, the March 30th uh, planting date was the earliest we got done last year. Uh, we had two products here that were both um, both 4.6 maturities. And you can see starting March, April, May, all, all those three planting dates, uh, those varieties interacted much differently than one another. Even though they're both the same maturity, uh, varieties do respond differently to these planting dates. So um, if um, if you're planting, uh, trying to choose a variety, make sure that whoever you're visiting with on your seed selection knows how their varieties respond. That's one thing that, that we've been working with, uh, with our lineup every year. I do some planting date trials uh kind of in the the eastern side of my territory around crawfordsville and um we've got three years of data uh, with some of this stuff looking at april may and then like i said we added in a march this past year so going to try to have another one this year with with march planning dates as well where we're adding in a couple new varieties so every variety you need to know how they respond to these planning dates that's just like selecting for soil type or or irrigation management planting date is a management um, key that you need to know how your varieties are going to react so um, two of the ones one of the new ones was a 46 a 90 very good variety will be our biggest seller this year uh, here in eastern arkansas and and so when i tell you these varieties this is for our area this is for eastern arkansas northeast arkansas as you move south or north some of this variety selection stuff may change a little uh, based upon your latitude. So, you know, for our area, this is what works for us. So uh, anytime you're going to be planting in the, the end of March or anytime the month of March, you're going to want to choose the later indeterminate growth maturities that you can select for your area. So uh, I would try to stay in that 4.6 to 4.950 indeterminate kind of range. Um, it's probably the most ideal. Um, but, you know, maturity isn't everything. But typically those maturities will allow for more growth, more inner nodes. And, and the more nodes you have will, will give you more opportunity to set pods on those nodes. So, uh, you can see two different varieties here, four sixes that uh, in our March planting date, 46A90, uh, got considerably taller, got more nodes um, on that variety. And and we ended up, when you look at the uh, the yield on that, it, um, it had more yield as well. So it, it responded uh, in turn with, with more growth, more, more nodes to set pods on and had a higher yield. As we moved into the mid-April window, that plant height got a little closer together. Still 46A90 got more growth. Um, it had more inner nodes. It had more lateral branching. Um, and that's what you're going to see when you start comparing varieties in these planting dates. Some really like it. Uh, this is on a 38-inch row, 38-inch single row spacing. And so you know, you're going to have some that really lateral branch well and, and some that are more narrow and, and that don't respond in turn. And, and those can affect yield. So um, 
when you look at the the mid April, they get more comparable in height, but still 46A90 uh, had really good standability and, and got really good height and in 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 turn uh, still had a slight yield advantage. So both these really got closer together in yield um, as we got in that because the growth was similar. Um, and so that's why you you really want to make sure, especially in these. The early half of April and, and into March, you want to stay in this 4.5, 4.6 and later maturities if you can. As you get to mid-April and as you get beyond that, you can move into your, your earlier fours, um, you know, late threes. Th those maturities will, will get enough growth and respond yield-wise by getting enough nodes to set enough pods to, to maximize yield. Is what I have seen in our trials. So as we move into May, some things change a little bit. So we know yield, uh, yield. There is a yield benefit due to harvesting sunlight uh, during peak pod development in the longest days of the year. That we 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 benefit from that with our March and April planting windows. Uh, you're gonna not. You will not benefit from that as much when you plant in mid-May. You're going to have a, a little bit shorter plant height, or I mean a little taller plant height. The plant's going to get more vigorous and growth. Those longer days are going, and warmer temperatures are going to push plant height higher. Um, that's where lodging can become more of a concern, and um, it will have a um, a negative effect on yield versus our April and March planting window. Um, as you can see, your pod sets on the earlier plantings are lower. You get more low, more pods set on the bottom of the plant, uh, more pods set on your lateral branches. As you get into May, you can see these plants, very few pods on the very bottom of the plant. Most of your pod set is in the top, top to middle part of the plant. So um, just a few things that I that, uh, wanted to share. Um, of what we have seen the last few years with, with variety selection. If you need, you know, if you farm here in, in eastern Arkansas and, and you need some help on variety selection and, and seeing some more of the yield data and stuff we've had from that, uh, reach out to us um, and, and we'll be glad to, to have those discussions. So um, just some thoughts and um, good luck. Hope we have a good planting season. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.